Hello. In this video, I'm going to be milling this little button. Being a circular part is obviously something you would do on a lathe if you had one, but I don't have a lathe, so I'm going to be doing it on my mill. I'm going to mill it out of this. This is a small piece of 7075 aluminum I got from McMaster Car. This is shorter than, you know, I think would be ideal, but I think it's long enough. To hold it, I'm going to be using this thing here. I'm sure you guys can basically see what it is, but it's an ER32 collet block. And uh, when I mill it, it will only have to stick out about that far. Not a big deal. It's not being held as as well as I would like in the collet, but I think it's good enough. I think it'll be fine. This video is going to be mostly a kind of check it out video. I don't think there's going to be a lot to learn, but I will go to the, the CAD and the CAM right now and talk about it a little bit. After that, we'll actually, or I'll actually show the milling. Alrighty, so here is the button in Fusion 360. It's pretty simple. I don't want to take too much time on it, but I do want to explain a couple things just for, you know, just in case anyone out there is wondering. So this is the part that you hold, you know, press with your finger. There are two grooves in it. There's one right here. This is for an O-ring. And this one here is for an E-clip. I actually have a uh, section analysis set up here. So that we can get a better idea of what you know what the button's doing. So this is my action and ca action camera enclosure, and the button goes through this hole that I've drilled on the top. It's obviously to press the shutter release and stuff. The O-ring that will sit here will act against this surface and seal, you know, the coolant out, and then E-clip goes here and prevents the button from being pushed out of the enclosure. Also, there will be a spring between here and here. Uh, that's the plan anyway. I haven't actually seen the spring that I, that I ordered, so hopefully it'll fit in there correctly. This O-ring gland right here will actually be rounded off because I'll be cutting this slot with a full radius slot cutter. I've modeled it as a square though because um, having this edge makes producing the, the cam tool pass much easier. If there's a full radius right here I'd have no edge to select so what I would have to do or I guess I wouldn't have like a perfect edge to select so what I'd have to do is select some other edge, maybe this one here. And then I'd have to use like a negative stock to leave to force the tool into this uh, cylinder here to create the gland. But since it's modeled as a, a square groove or whatever, I just have the, uh, I could just select this one edge here, which is pretty nice. One other thing I'll mention in here is that I have this eighth inch hole drilled in it. And that's so I can stick a rod in there and use the rod to hold the part while I anodize it later. I figured very quickly, since I haven't seen anyone else mention it, sometimes I can tell that the part is not being rendered as well as I think it could be. And I found that you can increase the detail of the render by going into, sorry, by right clicking on the top of your tree here, choose display detail control, and then you can choose fixed and select your detail level from this drop down here. I like to use high. If I switch it to low, you can kind of get an idea of you know what what I'm what I'm avoiding by going to high. It's kind of like faceted there. I prefer it to not be faceted and my computer is powerful enough that it can handle it. I don't know what it takes to, to render 
in high, but um, I've I've personally not run into a problem that I can identify as as being caused by that. All right, so I want to go over to the cam. This part will be machined from this orientation here, and the vast majority of the machining will be from uh, this this direction. Actually, you know what? There's one other thing that I wanted to show since I, I haven't seen anyone else do it. Sometimes you come in here and all these cam tool paths are need to be regenerated. And what you can do is just right click and hit generate tool path. Everybody knows that. But sometimes it's hard to tell how far along in the regeneration it is. And sometimes you start working on something and then realize, oh, oops, it was still generating and uh, whatever, it's just a little annoying. So up in the manage toolbar, there's this thing here, the task manager. And if you open the task manager, it shows you the operations that it's currently generating. So if I right click on here and do generate toolpath, you can see the toolpaths kind of pop in here and then as they get completed, they disappear. So if you're doing like your entire um, just all the setups at once. It'll take a while to generate and having that little window to show you when it's actually done is, is kind of convenient. Okay, so let's actually simulate this and I'll try to just narrate it quickly. When I actually mill this, they'll be cooling all over so it'll be hard to see. So check out the simulation now. So first it comes in and does a 3D adaptive clearing. This just roughs out the part and clears out almost all the stock. Faces the top, then finishes the side and floor here, and then the side of the that part of the button. Spot drill, eighth inch drill, thin T-slot cutter. That's for the E-clip. It's a full radius slot cutter for the O-ring gland. And then the remaining machining is chamfering. So I did these three edges first and I had to come in separately for this one. And that is uh, basically in order to chamfer this edge, I had to make sure that the bottom of the tool did not gouge into here. That meant the tip of the tool was basically right about here. If I did this edge at the same time, the tip of the tool would have been right around here. It would have cut a lot of this apart, or cut you know a lot of this off. So I had to come in and do this one as a separate operation. Then I back chamfer these two edges, and then I put in a, a groove right here. And that groove is basically just for visual reference when I cut the part in the bandsaw before doing the second side. The, the groove here will, you know, let me know that I cannot, you know, I cannot cut beyond this point with the bandsaw. I think that's about it. Hopefully that wasn't too long, and I think the next thing you'll see is the machine actually milling.
And here it is after the first setup. As I mentioned, the machining in the first setup was almost all the machining. All that's left here was to cut off the excess stock with the bandsaw, flip the part over and stick it back in that collet holder, and then mill the top off. I attempted to record that, but I failed at that. Uh, part of the reason that I'm redesigning and remaking this button here. Here it is finished. I stuck the O-ring on there and the E-clip. Looks pretty good in my opinion. It is a tiny bit shorter. The top portion there is about 1.05 millimeters and I was shooting for 1.15. Pretty close. Close enough for me. Alrighty, I'll see you guys later.